First up for general information is Linda Selleck. Good evening, gentlemen. Um, I'm here to clarify the status of my property on Ed North Hadley, the old garage that Jack and I bought in 2011. And my husband, who, we rescued that historical garage and did a lot of work on that property, and we had a license. And as you know, Jack Kirschless died you know, about two years ago this week. And I kept, I keep, kept the property. I am now the manager of that LLC. I own it. So I want to be able to sell it, and I want to make sure that I'm representing it correctly. Which and the property license, is this? The yeah. West Coast Old Ride. West Coast Old Ride. OK, yeah, West Coast Old Ride. Yeah, yeah. So basically, we've had a license through the town. It's, I just let it go this last year, so I know that it's still okay legally for another year to be able to sell it as that. License for what? Used cars. Used cars and repair. Okay, but it hasn't been used as a garage in how many years? It was used as a garage when my husband was alive, and as I told you, I kept it active the last couple of years. I paid all the bills, I've done all the work on it. Nobody was. I was not physically there um, selling cars. I was okay. okay, so it's in the uh, limited business district. Right. And uh, facilities for cleaning, sale, or repair of motorized vehicles are not permitted in the limited business district. I have my class two sale of second hand motor vehicles. So that's issued by the select board. Yeah. Right. And that's not a zoning determination. That's just a distant license, and if it hasn't been actually, just because there's a license on the property, if it hasn't been actually being used. What determines active use? Have you been, has vehicle been sold out of there? Probably not this last year, but probably before that. What does last year mean? This is 18, 17. So I drive by there twice a day. I know you do. I know you do. And, I know, you know, there's no activity there. Because my husband is dead. That's the main reason. Jack bought that after we lost our property in Vermont to the hurricane. Many of you knew him. He put his heart and soul into renovating that property, renovating that house, which was a disaster. And we put a lot of time and money into the property. Obviously, when you lose your partner, who is the car person, you don't sell cars nonstop. I'm not. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, okay. so it isn't the whole LLC was placed in my name before Jack died. So I guess I'm trying to figure out what can be done there because I have a person who would like to use it as a car business again. And, and since that was the history of that place, I'm here to find out what we can do. I know it's old. I know it was not the normal zoning for Hadley millions of years ago. but. What would you do with it? <laughs> what would you suggest? So there's there's a list of what can be done in the limited business district. Right. Um, and um, there are a number of uses allowed. Uh, retail, bank, uh, small repair shop. Um, there's, there's a chart with the lists with the allowable uses laid out there. So even though my LLC says that I can own and manage real estate and operate a used vehicle sales business and vehicle repair shop, you're saying that's not true. Is that what I'm hearing? The LLC, that's the, from the statement Stand. of, Stand. that's what the LLC can do, but that doesn't have anything to do with where you can do it. That's what you filed with the Secretary of the Commonwealth. Correct. Correct. Okay. They don't make zoning determinations. So are you basically denying me the privilege of continuing that as a business? Not as a business. No, as a used car business. The repair or sale of motorized vehicles is not permitted in a limited business district. That was, that was grandfathered property, though. But yeah, the grandfathering there was 
is two years grandfathering. Two years grandfathering. Okay, so that, I guess that's what she's got to figure out then. Yeah, if you can prove that you sold vehicles out of there in the last two years, and the, probably the best way to do that is to bring in some bills of sale of vehicles that you sold or repaired. Because, I mean, it's only two years, and you've got to have records if that was done. So you're saying June 6, 2016, till now? I can't really answer that right now. All I know is this license just expired, so I guess what I'm trying but to But the, the license isn't important. If you have, you're saying that your husband passed away, you know, I'm sorry, I, I'm sorry about that, le less than two years ago, and he was repairing vehicles before he passed. If you can bring in bills of sale, repair logs, repair sheets, invoices that showed that you repaired or sold vehicles out of there in the past two years, your grandfather. If you don't have anything like that, right. then you haven't been doing. Then we, we have nothing to prove that you were, were doing that. Class I guess I assume what I paid for the bond and what I paid for the license and I paid for the plates that that was all legitimate because that that meant that legally it was still in an active business. That's what I assume because I'm not. A did the selectman grant you that privilege to sell automobiles there yet? I haven't been there. I was told. Okay, so yeah. they usually they usually want a zoning determination before they issue that, regardless of. So that must have happened previously. That, that, that's been in effect for a little while now. Yeah, because I recognize some of the yes. But but again, going back to if you're if you're. If, 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 Somebody has been repairing or selling vehicles out of there in the past two years. There has to be invoices and records of that. If the person is dead who did it and I don't repair, how would that be? There has to be log books or invoices someplace. Those have to be kept for a longer period of time than just when they pass. The, board, the records don't disappear. That's the law. Right. Okay. So someplace there has to be records of that. If there's records of that, bring them in, your grandfather. If you don't have records of that, all we can say is that it didn't happen and you're not grandfather. I'm sorry, but that's the law. That's zoning. And anybody that repairs vehicles knows you must keep records a minimum of five years. Might even be longer than that, especially if you sell them. That garage started before the zoning act took place. That's correct. Then when he passed away. All I'm saying what is if there's John, records, this, records in the, the last question. two years that it reverts to the original. Right. He did a wonderful job of cleaning it up and painting it. And stuff. I was yes. happy that we bought that. And that's why but, uh, I really but really nevertheless. Yeah. So, you know, like I said, the records have to be someplace. I don't know where. But if they've got to be around, if, he, if the repairs were done, the law says you must keep these for several years. Talk to your accountant, your CPA. Okay. He's got any then bring, bring in a couple of invoices. One, two is enough to show that, okay, this is what went on. This is the dates. This is what was done. And your grandfather. In fact, your grandfather back before limited business. Your grandfather has a business, not limited business. Because it existed prior to limit bus limited business. That, that business has been in place since well before zoning took in, was in effect. So. Used car lot is has to be required to carry a lot of That's date, serial numbers, everything is on that log book. So <clears throat> those books have got to be someplace. Yeah. If they exist. Hopefully they do. That was a class two license? Yes, sir. Yeah, then you required to, to, to have that for whoever the name was there. Yeah. So. so how do I find out what kind of businesses are permitted there if I can't find this? I mean, well, I wish so I'd done this last year, gentlemen, but I was too... Understand. Go, just go to the Hadley website, the Hadley Mass website, go to the planning board and look up the zoning bylaws and look up limited business and it gives you a whole list of things that are uh, permitted. Which chapter is that? 
Yeah. But I think it's actually going to be a section two. Yeah, section two. The table of uses, there's an entire column of what is allowed in limited business. Thank you, Jim. Okay. Next is Bill Gillian, Britt Banus, and John Krafta. Right. Krafta. <laughs> Francis, uh, ideal storage on 10 Mill Valley Road. Yes. Francis here. <clears throat> and he would like to she left her jacket. tear down a couple of his older structures and build a three story structure in their place. For, for storage? Mm -hmm. A three story a three story storage? Yeah, climate control. Oh, okay. Is it going to be multi floors? Three stories. Or, or just three stories in, or just a high ceiling? Multi floors. Multi floor, okay. And looking at the table of the setbacks and the other th things, uh, the ones that are shaded in are the only things that are changed. Well, the parking, the parking is changing considerably. Yes, uh, and we have no. There's no regulations that we know of for telling us how many parking spaces is. No, two for one, two square feet for every square foot of building. Yes. So, for, rich, for the last 20 years, he's had something like 10 spaces right. existing. Right. But, but and he had room for 100 or more. But there's, but there's no need for parking, in, except for your bylaw. The bylaw requires it. So if you don't need it, you have to provide for it either, you don't have to build it if you don't need it, but you need to have the space on your site for it, or you need to buy through T transfer development rights the ability to put that space. We, we, we agree you don't need the space for that much storage. I mean, right. However, however, the bylaw is the bylaw. We can't waive that, so you need to either provide it on site or buy TDR. And what if we go to the ZBA? Because they did grant the variance a few years ago when we were thinking of putting up the second phase of the buildings two story, and it was just way out back. Well, and the ZBA did grant the variance for that. For, for what? For parking. Okay, I don't remember that. No, but the problem the problem we face in many buildings become multi-use after a while, mm -hmm. rented out for offices. Uh, other situations, right. so we've run into that before. So that's it, it, that's it, the reason. To be the honest, problem. they should not have granted the variance. Granted, of granting variances, there's a, there's a couple of you know topography, um, a few other things, but there is an option for the parking, and that's to purchase TDR. Okay, so it's not like. If you can't, if you don't have the space, you can't do it at all. There is an option. You're going to purchase TDR rights, and what's that? Transfer development rights for every two thousand square feet of parking. You buy one acre, I believe it is, of oh, TDR. Mm -hmm. That's uh, section 17 of the zoning bylaw, farmland preservation bylaw. Well, my version is different. Different than yours. Let me see this. 17, uh, Roman numeral 17. Let me see. I'll show you where the table is. <coughs> Yeah, just yeah, right here. Three over there too. It just isn't, right here. It isn't. Okay. Right here, right there. There it is. One acre of developable land equals two thousand square feet of parking area. And the current height of the developable nine thousand. Just so you'll know what the actual cost is. 
Nine one thousand. acre would cost you ninety-nine seventy-eight. Would give ninety-nine seventy-eight gives you one acre of PDR land, and that equates to two thousand square feet of parking. So I don't know how many square feet you're talking here. The uh, eighteen thousand feet per floor. But the first floor has already got storage there, so that would be grandfather's, I imagine. So I imagine it would be so the meeting 36,000 36, square feet of a building. You'd need 72,000 square feet of parking. So I don't know what you have on the site. That's a lot of parking. Well, we're taking out two buildings, right? So yeah, that's that we said the first floor. The first floor is covered by the first floor you're building in, in, in ballpark figures. Well, taking almost two acres of uh, parking you would need, and your whole site is nine acres. Looks like you wouldn't have uh, it on there. Right. But it also means that he has a lot of land, so yeah, but maybe he only needs to, to buy. Well, uh, but he's going to all, all, all right? of these are going to be someplace in a parking. You know, you've got to go back in time because this was built. Oh, oh. Well, this you was, can't just start with what no, he's adding. because this, 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 this has to be included as well. Mm -hmm. And so you've got to go back and see what the variance was, what the original plans were. There's a lot of work to be done going backwards to find that, okay, these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine buildings. Um, <clears throat> required this for parking, this is what we had for parking, this is the variance we were granted, what's covered, what's not covered, and then go forward with that. How many variances were According, put on this? according to them, they went for one. Just one? One variance on this whole project? Yeah, on the second phase when we were putting What about the first stage? No, it wasn't necessary no. to get a no. variance. So, um, but assume that I doubt you have excess parking if you went for variance. So the 36,000 so square. That, again, that was the variance when we were going to do those additional buildings, all the two story. So okay. that's four or five buildings. Now we're just taking out two buildings, putting up one building, three okay. stories. That variance was for okay. four or five two story okay. buildings. Again, you'd have, you'd have to go look back in your records and the drawings and what was, what do you need, what did you grant, what was variance, I don't know. Mm -hmm. there's, there's, there's some some homework that has to be done on your part to research this and come up with the answers. Yeah. Okay. In addition to that, do you see any other red flags? Yeah. Only to make sure of the conservation, because you're near some wetlands there. But you know about that, you just got to go through the wetlands, conservation, whatever. Yeah, we're not increasing. Like. I, I, I'm just saying, but that's yeah. the only, as far as everything else that you want to do, the three-story building is a permitted, you're in an industrial zone. Yeah. Um, you've got a height to the thing, there's a certain height within the yeah. industrial zone. Is this Langwood in the aquifer? That's a, a detention pond. No. Does, does this, this, is, this is in the aquifer, yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Okay. No, the whole section here is the aquifer. We charge you now. You know. Um, so, you know, you're, you're very, very close on your percent coverage of the site mm -hmm. for building. Just going to make sure that that is mm -hmm. um, accurate. Yeah, right, right, okay. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> building height in it. Permitted well, to be 50. I'm going to say you're in industrial zone, so you've got like a 50 foot height of 45, so you're well within that. Right. Open space. Again, you're tight on the open space, just make sure that that's a. You know, those calculations are, go are, are good. Good, yeah. Okay. Other than those things, the biggest thing is parking. The rest? And the Conservation Commission, uh, do they meet weekly, monthly? I believe they kind of meet as needed. Tuesday, so, you can go at the Tom Hall. Uh, what's her name is there? Janice. Janice. Stone. Janice Stone is there on Tuesdays, okay. Go in there, bring the map, and, and oh, sit down with her. She, she's pretty good job, you know. Right. You know, 44 of solar, you're talking solar on a roof. I right? think she's there to look. No possibility. We're gonna, we're no, 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 no. I'm just saying, but it would be on the roof. Yeah. So there's no special permits required for that. So she's there till like 11 o'clock, I think, on Tuesdays. So you go to Tuesday morning. Should be very helpful for you. And, and then, assuming then our next step after that would be to go to the ZBA. 
No, you no, don't, have we don't come back. Come back here. Once, once you find out everything, like this is what we have for building, this is what mm -hmm. we have for parking, this is what we need for parking, and then you come back here before we go to the ZBA right. because what are you going to what are you going to the ZBA for? I don't know. That, that's why I say yeah, come back here after yeah. all after you get that. <laughs> so so you have to right apply for and well, they may be able to amend the prior variants. Mm. But that's a couple of years old. How old? Yeah. That that was several years ago, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's that's you can't really amend the older one. No. But they could that couldn't be used anywhere. Well, to, to you're you're you're, you're the, if you were granted a variance, well, you, you're granted a variance. It is very specific. It was the, it was granted for the purpose stated in that variance? But I don't know what that says. Okay. And it does expire after three years now. Right. right but we just we couldn't present that as an argument as to even though it's expired. To, there, 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 there's you, you could you could try, but in zoning. There was no so-called uh, precedent-setting stuff. Every every application is unique to itself. Uh, so that could be a possible route, though, even though it's expired. We don't comment on that, okay? Because it's up to the ZBA. Okay. So okay. It, so you have to come before us with a site plan, yeah. with the the numbers. They yes, we're willing to buy some TD our uh, yeah. transfer of development rights, extra parking, or, and, uh, and you know, is there enough green space? So we'll say yes, yes, or no, no. And, and you could also try for, well, you know, you need 72,000 square feet of, uh, what do we call it, um, PDR, that's 36 acres. That's a whole lot of money. So maybe you come and do, do a, well, let's let's uh, let's negotiate here. I'll buy this many acres of TDR, and I like a variance for this. So there's something you'd have to decide on what would make business sense. I got a question on this. This sold for TDR. Could they they turn around and remodel that for offices? We would have to be parking. We would have to put into the special permit that this site could only be used. They can't put into the variance. Just so you understand, right. the ZBA a variance is granted to the property, not to you, not to the use, not to anything else. It is granted to the property. So if you're exempt from parking for this much building, you're exempt from parking, and if you sold it to somebody down the road, they're exempt from parking. Mm -hmm. However, in a special permit that we grant for site plan approval and that's why TDR would be a good thing to even purchase just a couple of acres because we could also, we could roll all the special permits and put conditions on the special permits that this site is to only be used for storage. If it's to be used for something else other than storage, climate controlled or anything else you want to call it, storage to me is storage, then we could say you need to come back to the planning board and go through a whole new process because you don't have adequate parking, possibly, for the new use. Do you understand what I'm saying? Uh, not all, but I'm hoping Mr. Gillen mm -hmm. understands some, and John understands some. Uh, but he, he needs to know all this before you make your move. So, you know, buying property. Yeah. Um, but if, again, I, I don't want to annoy you, but... Uh, Ask the questions now. <laughs> questions are easy. The chief. If you drive by the facility, we've got eight acres there. On any given time, the maximum number of cars is probably six cars yeah. on eight acres. Right. Now, at times there's more. That might be a bit more. A lot of times there's less. So if we're, we're not questioning the need right. that you don't need the parking area. Uh -huh. Okay. Nobody up here is saying well, you need uh -huh. seventy thousand square feet of parking. Uh -huh. We're trying to work out a way so that you don't need to put it in, so that it's not prohibitively expensive for you to do that, uh -huh. and to cover down the road, either you or somebody else, that if the use, to John's point, suddenly changes from storage, so, you know, thir 35 years from now, you're no longer going to own ideal movers. Mm -hmm. And maybe you sell it, or whoever your heirs are, sell it to somebody else. And they want to put in an industrial building there or a business building. Could that be granted 
elected that should the use change, then those people need to come back. That's right. exactly what I'm saying, but it right. cannot be in the variance. But the problem a variance, is exactly. a variance cannot have conditions. It's either granted for the use, period. Okay, but a special permit can have conditions on it. Uh -huh. So we could put those conditions on the special permit. Okay. Yeah, so long as you understand it. So we want you to understand that, and we also want you to understand that these are the things we want to work towards so that you get what you need and the town gets what they need, at least to some extent, and protect everybody so from, from a disaster in 30 years, 40 years from now. Okay? Or less, or whatever it might be. So, I mean, because of how the bylaw is written, we have very limited authority to waive parking. Mm -hmm. uh, we can waive a fraction of it uh, under certain circumstances. And frankly, the ZBA should not be granting variances for parking uh, because it meets none of the statutory standards for it. So, you know, that's sort of the environment you're working in. Um, we, can't give you a, we can't give you a waiver and the ZBA shouldn't have given you a waiver. Um, and part of it is we have to be able to justify to the next guy who comes in looking for a variance mm -hmm, mm -hmm. why he doesn't deserve it either. Yeah, but again, so apples to apples. Well, you, know, exactly. you look at that, whatever that purpose was. You're putting in you're putting in a very dense buildings on a property with very little parking, and so somebody down the road come in and say, well. You know, ideal story did it. Why can't I do it? But it has to be apples to apples, right? I mean, but they're not apples to apples. They're, they don't care about apples to apples. They come. They come. They they care about business to business. Okay, and people will argue that till the cows come home. It makes sense apples to apple, but we don't see apples to apples most of the time. Okay. Let me ask: the majority of the existing building type that's on there now would never be converted to anything else because it would be illegal. So we're talking about the, the possibility that the new building might change use and occupancy. So why would that, why would that require all the sheds to how, how bigger each of the shed? How bigger each of the sheds each of the units? All the other ones took up the, the property. property. Yeah, all the yes. other ones took up the property. Right. So your, your shed, right. the new one, is the yeah. problem. You, did, you didn't knock yeah, No, I understand. I understand that. But I think someone said earlier that we have to count the existing built uh, volume that's there. Right. Absolutely. Right. But that existing built volume would never be used for anything other than... It makes no difference. It doesn't matter. It's the building is on a property. Square foot of right. building is square foot of your building, whether it's... New, old, or otherwise, it's it's on the property. Okay, so so we'll add up all of the gross floor area, all three floors, total up, multiply it by two, that tells us how many square feet of land we have to have. Yeah, Billy, what you should do is you know give us the total square footage. Is it on that map? You know, and so I think so. Plus, lot area sixty. Because Existing is there's going to be a certain amount of green space that's going to be required as well. Yeah, the open space. Open so, space. Yes, we, we comply yeah. with that. We're not changing that at all because he's tearing down the building and putting another one. The same well, footprint. But nevertheless, if yeah, you include parking in some of that green space, yeah. you're you, right. usurping your open space for parking. We're not to, the plan isn't to pave anything that's that isn't already paved. Yeah, but you're adding, you're adding two flights on top. If yeah. You, if you just had took those two and just put one flight, then there's no change. But when you're adding three stories, that makes mm -hmm. the change. Yeah. You know, well, we have to get out the records and really do some research. Yeah, you, you could do some research on finding out with the There's no way for you to acquire extra land where you are? No, we've approached. Them. No. That's it. You, yeah. you tend to win. There's it. nothing to the north and nothing yeah. to the south. The railroad. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the bike path. What if, what if just kind of, kind of 
crazy question, but what, what if we go down two floors? Does that affect anything? Go into the ground? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. We don't we don't define above or below grade uh, business floor area. Business floor area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Unless you could make one, I mean, obviously, obviously, the wild thing, hey, you go in around two floors and you made the top floor parking. But, you know, <laughs> that, that wouldn't make sense because you don't need the parking. So it'd be a waste of money. So, okay. Okay, thank you. That's why we started here first. Because that's exactly well, we've got correct. Too far along. Questions are easy. Like I said, questions are easy. Mr. Braidman. Hello. Happy, happy comedy. Happier Valley comedy. Yeah. Uh, renting in One Mill Valley. Um, you asked me to come back with some basic sign designs. Right. So uh, this is general measurements. I got the gentleman at Sunrays Printing working on final okay. designs. But this is the sizing of it at least. So. We're going to have two of these. One is on the directory hanging signs. Okay, that's one up front, right or right. Yep, and okay. one is above our window on the, on the parking lot side of the building. And those are the colors? Yep, those will be the colors. And then this is going to be a vinyl on the inside of one of the windows. Oh, okay. So you got 25, 26 square feet. And then no, you're, within, you're certainly within the allowable. Okay. Okay. Can we have to keep that? Sure. Take a motion, though. So let's see. Check and see if we approved. I think we approved the subject of the sign. Mm -hmm. We were supposed to come back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no, we didn't take a vote. Wait a minute, No. Oh, okay. So. You didn't put your address down on one of these, did you? I don't okay. think so. Okay. All right. Um, six. Six. Happy D Day. Um, Okay, um, so I'll make a motion to waive further site plan approval for Happier Valley Comedy. And that's at One Mill Valley Road? Yep. Is so that the last open space in the building? Yeah. Yeah, Sweet Bean, if it matters. But yeah, that's the last open one. Um, and. Uh, and sign design. So I'll make a motion to waive site plan approval and to approve the sign. So moved. In favor? Second. Second. All motion. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Okay. So that? if you would just. You got any jokes before you leave? You can tell us. Name an address there, so we can send you the letter. All right, thank you. Mr. Iser. Yes, sir. Two items this evening, gentlemen. A&R plan, and then the submission for Mr. Ribzinski at 26 Russell Street. So then the site plan will be the A&R first. This is empty land on Aquavita Road, so I can't give you a street address, Bill. I can give you assessor's map numbers if you'd like. Sure. Map 4A, parcel 16, and parcel 21. What this is, is a piece of property that's on one deed, but the road bisects it, and lawyers don't like transferring property like this without having it surveyed and signed off by the planning board. So we've got a piece that goes from the Connecticut River not quite to Bay Road. And Aquavita Road goes through the middle, more or less. 
this is one one deed and I, it may say accepting the road, that kind of thing. But anyhow, this is just... This is in a floodplain, right? right? Yes. This floods all the time. Yes. Yep. And it's just, I, mean, I know Alex's buying this. I don't know what's happening with this. Where's the river? Right? Yeah, down here. Right here. But it's, it's, it can't be built on because it's in the, I believe it's in the flood way. I think, I think this, this floods all, I mean, like, every, yeah, not right? every year, but yeah. frequently. So I'm pretty sure that it is not buildable, it may be uh, suitable for uh, recreational use, but I think that's it. Okay. Cycle down? Yes, sir. This is for the rest of the, the yeah. second story building? Second story, correct. July 17th. Good day for everybody, July 17th. And what's that for? The public hearing date. It's the third Tuesday of July. Yeah. Um, okay. May I? Do we think that we are going to get through the senior center on June nineteenth? Absolutely. Not. It will be done. It will, we will not be ready for a decision. We'll have to continue that. Uh, we've already decided we're not going to meet July third. Third. So, 
That would make the 16th a likely continuation 17th. day. 17th, a likely continuation day. For the senior center. For the senior center. Well, this is not going to be a big deal. It should not be. I can't imagine. Nobody showed up the first time. Any of the butters, I can't believe. I mean, they're they're we we could take this up at the beginning of the meeting, probably take, let's say, half an hour. Right. And the senior center just going to have to get in line and wait. Right. I'm not going to put everybody else off just because okay. of the senior center. That would be unfair to everybody else. He's how, so he's his he's going by Easy Ride LLC. That's what he's called. Yeah. Okay. That'll be the first one. I so this know. is this is what the new. It's the additional. Uh, yeah. Where's the? I don't want to mistake what he's going. What what he's adding. The bill, the uh, yeah. 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 fifteen hundred ninety three square feet of building space. Oh, okay, that's what I want to know. Okay, and that is at twenty six. Twenty six. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There's 26 Brussels too? 26 yeah. Brussels, yeah. This is Who knows? I have two copies of the drainage study and the associated plans that go with it, the construction details and all that. Is that enough? That's enough. Okay, good. And there's, there's enough trees in there. To there's all of, well, this is all of the site plan. Yeah. This is the drainage and stuff. Yes, sir. Do you, you're going to file one of these for the town clerk, right? You, you want me to file another one? No, 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 no. Do you, you have one of these to file with the town clerk? I can. I, I don't have another copy, but I'll get one. Well, one is all we need. Okay, good. Then I'll take that one. And these are all one. Okay. Okay. Yes. You can make. There's how many here? There's nine there. Go over back. Give me one of those, and then I'll have yeah. everything I need to. Also be for the town. Submit to we, the we town clerk. We don't need like nine. Okay. So the clerk doesn't get them anymore. They don't want to just okay. take it over. They're too busy. In fact, you can't get the help. All right, that's it. Thank you very much. Very good. Come on up. All right. Oh, Steve Lewis. Yes. We're just going to make a decision on Steve Lewis, right? We have nothing right. else? Right. So this will take more than a minute or two. That was uh, site plan approval with special permit. Site plan approval, business use and aquifer, stormwater management, the three of them. Not that they're serving more than 40,000 square feet, but they're affecting potentially 40,000 square feet. We did that just to be safe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You had all everything all cleared out with the one in there. I'm sorry. Well, uh, all cleared out so there's no spoils there or nothing. We have we had an environmental engineer came out over the weekend. And he's putting together a report for us now just to kind of cover our own our own process in the meantime. Yeah. Were they able yeah. to stiff it just like I said, or was it more involved in that? It's 
there's a couple, there's two different options that we're using. There's a visual inspection and there's also a, a sniffer, but the, it's only able to detect certain things, but I believe it actually will apply in this case. So, okay. Yeah, because yeah, the fuels we're looking for is oil and gas. Exactly, it can detect the, it can detect the gas which case is not going to be visible, and, it, and it, it, as far as the oil, it's a visible thing that you can see as well. So well, that I think between the two, I think it should cover. Here. Yeah, but that would just yeah. but if he, cover the base of that oil. Yeah, but if he does detect some spillage there now, yeah, what do you do with what we do? Do you isolate that area? That's a good question. If there's a spillage there now, then obviously that's something that we have to decide if we want to continue to rent there knowing that uh, a year from now we can be held uh, liable. So, yeah. Uh, I have walked the property. I haven't seen anything visibly, nor did he see anything, you know, as far as that, but... Um, yeah, that whole so. property had to do a 21E before you started anyway, when they stole it, didn't it? Right. So they had right. to have right. things so out. Well, no, because that's, that's not necessarily true. There are levels of 21E, and the the simplest level the bank does, and if there's no obvious signs of trouble, that's as far as it goes. And that's basically just a records review, mm -hmm. looking whether anything has ever been filed with DEP. If they find something filed with DEP, they go digging deeper. But if something never made it to DEP's file, this is why you're doing a baseline study. Right. If something was never reported, for example, mm -hmm. and I'm not saying that happened, but right. if something right. never came to DEP's attention, there wouldn't be a file on it, and right. you wouldn't find it on a routine phase one evaluation. Yeah. There, there was an oil spill in the house, in the cellar, heating oil, because we did a, a what's called an AUL area of activity and use limitation, whatever it is. That was in the, the house. The whole house? house? Yeah, that's well away from no. there. Well aware, away from where the cars are. Yeah. So. Okay. All right, preparing the motion. So, so we don't actually have any plans for this, really, do we? It's because you, you're not doing anything. We're not doing anything other than, yeah. Okay. Right. There's, just, no, there's, there's no parking. construction involved or, or yeah. anything. What you yeah. see is what you get. Yeah. Yeah, are, we, yeah. are you going to give us the preliminary report so we can have it with the... I would be happy to, yeah, yeah. yeah. you guys can let me know where I need to send that over. Just, uh, sure. send it, just send it, is it going to be electronic or paper? Uh, I imagine I can get either one. Electronic would be preferred. It would be, yeah. It's in it to Hadley Planning at Hadley Planning at MA.org. Planning yeah. at Hadley yeah. yeah. MA.org. Right. Yeah. It's on the website. Okay, yeah, I'll find it on there. Sure. Okay. Safe place to find my phone number. Yep. <laughs> All right, so I'll make a motion to approve the application for uh, site plan approval special permit and business use in aquifer. Um, based on the finding that uh, Steve Blue Subaru has obtained a variance to store unregistered uh, cars on the Pulse restaurant site. Um, Planning Board requires annual testing for oil and gasoline contamination. Um, otherwise satisfies the site plan review criteria. Is there a number not to exceed? I wouldn't have a clue. As far as the number of cars? No. We were discussing doing 80 cars, and I, my next step is to meet with the uh, uh, select, select board to, yeah, to get that handled. So for the moment, they've granted us our license for the, for the rest of the year, and that we're not Is 80 cars going to be enough there for you? It should, yes, it will. Because that okay. works. All right, so I'll add that. I thought you meant for a uh, uh, minimum for results from testing. No, no. There was, a, there, was a, there, was a, there was a maximum number of vehicles as well. I mean, we want to put on there, this is for new cars only. Right. Yes. New vehicles. Yeah. We do put used cars there during snowstorms for a period of 24 oh, hours. That's, but, that's different. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't, you've got to put them someplace. Yeah, yes. I don't have a, I don't have a problem with, with the snowstorm issue, but it's the, it's the longer term. Yeah, new I just don't want you guys getting upset, you know, this winter and you see cars there, they go away as fast as the... Uh, we can move the snow and get the cars back into the bus. All right. Um, uh, off 
site in storage of inventory vehicles. Vehicles to face to the north. Yeah. Yeah. No sales. as far as the 80 cars as well but is that a hundred feet from the road I think that's a safe number hundred feet off road yeah, yeah put hundred feet plus or minus yeah. <coughs> so, yeah. yep okay second um, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no signs yes no time no sign uh, no lighting. I'm going to leave no storage trailers in, just in case you think you might park those over there. Approval is subject to approval of other boards if and as required. Uh, changes of other boards must be approved by the planning board. for protection district for um, the blue Subaru um, and this pertains to suit Steve Lewis Subaru cars only correct 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 yes, yes. that yes. was that that's the that writing it up as that's being written up as yes okay so that is the motion for site plan approval and for uh, business use in the aquifer. So Motion. Second. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank okay. you guys very much. And Wait then we'll do yeah. a, um, that was for um, need the stormwater management. Oh, okay. And I'll make a motion to approve uh, that application, um, the basis that the uh, provisions of the uh, bylaw are applicable, project is not exempt, site work is consistent with the provisions, uh, meets the performance standards, and meets the design standards. That's the motion? That's the motion. So moved. Second? Second. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed you here. No, sir. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. You, you promise now to stay away? What's that? <laughs> you promise to stay away now? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've got to learn a lot about town politics. Here we go. Now you're up. I'm sorry. All right. I hope you've all had a chance to look at the definitions. I brought a whole bunch of stuff in. Yes. All right. Um, Larry had put this section together yeah. uh, based on definitions that were in other sections of your bylaws. Mm -hmm. uh, most of them are just pulled from those other sections, although there are some highlighted in yellow. And those ones are ones that are either new suggestions from Larry or um, they're alternatives. So where you may have a definition, he may have suggested something else based on uh, either the state legislation or other definitions that yep. he is familiar with. So um, would you like to go through? Just yes, start going absolutely. through. Absolutely. All right. All Excellent. Right. You got a picture copy? I do not have extra copies. Um, I I printed mine out of it that we all, we had multiple copies of this version sent to us. Yeah, I left mine in the printer at the uh, office. Shoot. 
So where a definition has been pulled from another section of the bylaw, yeah. are we proposing to remove it from that section? Yes. Okay. Put it in here. Okay. Unless there's some reason not to. Like there might be something, for example, we were talking about, I was asking him about, the, about the definition here of about open space today. Um, because it's talking about open space on a specific lot mm -hmm. and defining it that way. And I uh, was asking him about well, what about related to an open space subdivision, if that's something you have in your regulations. So he said that that would be, that would be in that section open space related to that specific regulation. So sometimes there may be some still within the regulations, but most of them are okay. in this so, so one section. Once we get these definitions ironed out, yeah. we'll have to go through and write up a amendment and say, okay, this is the new definition section, whatever's yep. going to be, and then in the different sections of the bylaw, these are being removed. Yes, and okay. Larry has that somewhere already okay. as well in our great. file. Great. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yep. Okay. So let's the, see. The one I've got is 5217. That's the latest one? Yes. Good. Yes, it is. Okay. Under accessory apartment. Accessory apartment. Okay. So that's the first new highlighted right. one. Yep. It says a second dwelling unit either, either in or added to an existing single family detached dwelling. What does that mean? That the, 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 the accessory apartment can be detached from the main building? That's the way I read it. Either in or added to an existing single family detached dwelling. No, um, to me that says that it is either within a detached single family dwelling unit or added to that unit. What's a single family detached dwelling? It should be an attached dwelling. No. What, what, what's a single family detached? No, I don't want to talk. I want her to answer the question. A single they family it. detached dwelling unit would be an individual single family home as opposed to an attached unit, which would probably be a condominium. Attached. You mean I live in a detached building? Yes. Yes. I never knew that before. <laughs> detached to what? Th that, from is, anything else. This is, this, is what I'm, this is confusing to me. Okay, a lot of, this is pretty normal. I understand that. I, I, I want to make sure that we are clear on it, and right. the building inspector is clear on it, that this doesn't mean that the accessory apartment can be detached no. from the main building. D detached suggests that it's detached from something. If it said that the unit, the second dwelling unit was detached, it doesn't say that. It says a second dwelling unit either added to, in or added to an existing single family detached dwelling. Detached from what? From anything else. Why can't else? we just take that detached no, dwelling? The well, you can. Um, yep. But then it would say in... We only family permit dwelling? single family dwellings. Okay, you have no condo. Mm, no, we not only by super special permits. Super special. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. The, 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 our zoning bylaw specifically written that one single family dwelling per lot. Okay. Okay. Then that probably makes it's sense for you. Style, yeah. So we could say we that the second the dwelling unit down. either in or added to an existing single family dwelling. It takes yes. the word detached out. Yes. Right. Added or attached to. Or within or attached to. Within or added to. Yeah. Should, we, so we, should, should we attach to instead of added? I would say attached to would be. So we take the, we replace the word doesn't. added with attached. Okay. That's all. Okay. Good. Okay. Accessory building, that's fine. Agriculture, that's fine. Now, okay, now, yeah. You've got agriculture listed twice. Okay. And I'm assuming the first one gives you a whole bunch of words. The right. second one is defined by M. Master Nawaz, Chapter 128, Section A, 1A. 
I would think that's the one we want to use. That's the recommendation, yes. And take out the non-highlighted one. Correct. Correct. And then okay. it just refers directly to the statute, and then if anything yeah. changes in the statute, that's you're right. all okay. set. I, okay. I, that's what I thought it meant, but I wanted okay. to make sure. Yep. Alteration is fine. Oh, you got two for alteration. Okay, so this is a, just a little more specific. So the yellow, the highlighted one, is a more succinct definition. It has more, some more information. Yes. Okay, so we take out the the first one. The first one. Yep. That's out. Okay. Now bread and back bread and breakfast. Can we just go over the agricultural one in the next town to our north? Uh, the lumbering operation performed by a farmer. Farmer wants to set up a sawmill. Loud. Right. The logging is defined under agriculture law. But it was denied under their interpretation of that in Sunderland. Yeah. Well, well logging and lumbering and a sawmill. sawmill, they're part of, I suppose they <coughs> could work know? together. They, they could they, they could go together, but probably shouldn't. So sawmill is a form of manufacturing. Would be a different. Yeah. Use, well, well, lumbering well, operation. Processing. Is that, right. Yeah. The, the, I asked okay. I asked Joel Bard this specific question a couple of years ago, and return, re, 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 referring more to sawmilling as opposed to lumbering. Right. And he said specifically that if the farmer is using the sawmill for his own lumber on his own property, it's considered an agricultural operation. Like a portable bandsaw. Okay. But if you are purchasing from me, others, others, right. and Five you're bringing it to your property and cutting it up, that is not considered a saw, a agricultural sawmill operation. But that should be spelled out in there, so there's no mistake. Well, performed by a farmer. For own use. For own one use. Thing, right, is, is one thing, but the process for others, that don't belong in that. So way. for own use, yeah. So this is probably, uh, you know, straight from the statute and Well, could you look that up? I can look that up. Could, could you look that up if that is direct mm -hmm. to the statute and if we could, could or could not put something in there, just what we just we talked to about for the own use? Okay. okay. Just so it's clarified. That's right. Yeah. I absolutely agree. We want this. This is going to be an evergreen document. We don't want the first one to be a disaster either. <laughs> That's right. We want to we want to make some improvements. Um, alteration, we're all set. Animals, livestock, feed, attic. Now we've got bread, bed and breakfast listed one, two, three, four, four times. Okay, so these must have come out, they must all be a little different and they must have come out of your existing regulations. Let's see how are they different? Because we do, I believe our bed and breakfast facilities are limited to a maximum number. So the establishment says four to six units. Believe so, but it's the facility wild. is general. Home is three or fewer, so that's smaller. And a bed and breakfast unit is going to be the well, specific well, unit within each. Right. Yeah, Section 22. Yeah. So I don't believe we allow. Bed and breakfast establishment is four to six units. That's what it has in here. A bed yeah. and breakfast facility is either an establishment or a home. An establishment yeah. is four to six units. A home is um, three or fewer. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what this has. And also... Uh, oh, okay, so that, that is taken right out of our yeah. definition. Mm -hmm. what when people have come in, I you think two mil? we've never allowed more than six. Okay, 
So this, okay. the, the, so the definitions are right sorry. in our, mm -hmm. taken right out of our, 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 own, our own section. Okay, that's fine. Good. All right. Roll board. Yeah, you've got to highlight it, but you don't give any alternates. That was probably just a new one because there wasn't any definition in here. Okay. A sign which advertises products or services not sold right. or provided on the premise. Yeah, we, we don't allow billboards and we're trying to get rid okay. of the ones we have where we can. Yeah, Larry was going to say there was a provision for removing billboards. Uh, he said, I'll bring that up to you later. Just that's for, you know, FYI. Not necessarily within the definition. Okay. Yeah, but all the billboards now that are in place are grandfathered in, right? Right. But no, were, he said if that was my question, and he said even with that provision, there is a sunset clause that can be put in. Okay. Yeah. I'll check with him on that. That would be after the fact. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's like a long shot, but it, and it takes a long time, and it's not easy, but it can be done. I think it's kind of what he said. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. All right. Building. Um, the only question I've got about building is any combination of materials, whether portable or fixed, having a roof to form a structure for the shelter of persons, animals, or property. The word building shall be construed where the context requires as though followed by the words or parts or parts thereof. A port is to be considered a part of a building when considering setbacks. What about, does that mean it doesn't need walls? If it's a roof, if it has a roof, it's considered a building? Uh, uh, that sounds just, like it. So I it, just always thought a roof is a lean tool. Well, th th this doesn't say anything about walls, and that's what I'm, that's the question I'm asking. All right, that's a good question. I, this is probably what is currently in your regulations. And it might very well be. Um, and I'm not sure, it would, you might want a building to include a large structure that would just exterior have a roof walls. on it. Include like exterior know. walls. Well, you take it don't have to be a foundation because yep. it could be a pole. Break. Take something like the Young Men's Club Pavilion right. Right. before they put yeah, doors yeah. on it. Right. That that's definitely a building, but it doesn't have walls. Right. Because right. structure is defined in this, and I'm assuming he pulled that out of probably the building code. Um, you don't. Let's see. Is that a new one? No, it's, it's non, non highlighted. Oh, I see. So, you, and you don't think that was anywhere no, else? No, 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 no. What I'm saying is a building the same as a structure? I don't think so. No, well, what so I think that's why they have different Like what Bill said about the young men's club, that's a pavilion. That's not. The pavilion is open just with a roof. Okay. Or the gazebo right. they're talking about for Saturka Park. Okay. I'm okay with that. Okay. I just would like to be a bit more clear that if it doesn't need to have walls, we make some kind of a comment in there that with or without walls. Okay. 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 Just just to be more clear. That's all. That's, I'm okay. not I'm not questioning the definition okay. that's there. Yeah. I just had a question about the walls and a building and a structure. Okay, they're different. That's fine too. So a pavilion's mm -hmm. a structure. Oh right. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have accessory building defined for before building accessory. Yeah, we have accessory building up mm -hmm. above. Okay, that's fine. So that's just that's just okay. A building detached. A building having open space on all sides. Right, and building attached. So even though. You say you don't have any condos right now. There could, could we be have commercial property. We have commercial. Commercials can be yes. condo. Right. A, a, a garage, a, a, detached, a detached garage is a detached building. Right. Okay, I understand that one. I don't have a problem with that. Detached principal structure, exactly what is right. to the turn. Building lot, C, C definition. Okay, I'm good with everything on that page. My next comment is on page four. Mm -hmm. Dwelling. 
Okay, you're good with County Driveway. That was another new one. Oh, okay. Common Driveway? Common Driveway. Okay, yeah, that's right. Okay, yeah, that's a good one. Yes, that's fine. Yeah. I'm, I'm just making the, the, the comment that I have no questions on. Okay. Co here. Common driveway, what is that? Is that for the residents? In other words, when two, two houses or more hey, share, share the same driveway. In, in a commercial, or, is, can or, be more. In a commercial or in a residential, a residential area can, can do it too. But a commercial is different than using a common driveway, isn't it? They can exceed yes, the, yes, more yes. than three uh, homes. Yes, three yeah, that makes right. sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. Dwelling. Dwelling. Any building that contains one or two dwelling units. And I had a question on why are we saying two dwelling units? Because we only allow one dwelling per lot. Okay, so that, the first one, is the one that was in your regulations. Okay. Larry suggested the second one. So maybe you would prefer that one. Private or publicly owned permanent structure that affected families. Not a motel guest house. Okay, so a, pro a dwelling is defined as a privately or publicly owned permanent structure for occupancy by families. The term one family, two family, or multi-family multi dwelling shall not include motel, guest house, hospital, membership, club, trailer, or dormitory. So just skip the two-family, multi-family ones. Well, it's not saying that a multi-family dwelling is permitted. Well, it's just somebody's going to interpret it that way. Well, you can take a, a whole house and make it multi-family, right? Correct. Yes. So why can't you allow that as a note? And I think we actually do have multifamily dwellings in um, we contemplate that the senior housing might be multifamily dwellings. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we should use that second one. Take the second. Yeah. Use okay. the second one. Take the first one out. First one out. Okay. okay. Under dwelling detached and dwelling one family, I, the only question I have is: it's a standalone residential structure. Should we put permanent structure? Would that be better? Why, what else would you put? What, what, they don't build no temporary structures, do they? Well, we don't want we don't want a, a trailer to be construed as a dwelling. Uh, we could do that. I the building. I think there is a definition for trailer and for mobile home later on that the should okay. clarify. Okay, okay. So, we, so we don't so we don't need permanent here. Okay. Right. All right. Same thing for those. All right. Okay. okay. Encroachment and the enforcement officer. Under encroachment. I just got a question that it seems too brief. Fill, construction, fill, construction of new structures, substantial improvement to existing truck structures or other development that does what? Yeah. yeah. What does it what what does the fill construction or substantial improvement affect? It seemed like something Yeah. Why don't I look at that one a little bit? Okay, more that means any fill, any construction or substantial improvement is encroachment. It seemed like there should seem like something was truncated on there. Okay. Yeah. I'll look at that. Enforcement officer. What kind of enforcement officer? Zoning, building? The inspector of buildings of the town of Hadley. So zoning enforcement, zoning enforcement, enforcement officer. officer. I believe that should be zoning enforcement, but yeah. I'm not, that's why I want to make sure you know. Well, doesn't that all fall under the building, the yeah. building commission? Yes, but if you just say enforcement officer, right. the enforcement of what? The building code or the, or the zoning code? Yeah. He probably thought because it was in the zoning right I there. understand. But, just, yeah. just That's one fine. Of me? Okay. Yeah. Um, everything is good. Fence. 
What? Fence. Yes. The last line. Fence. Fences are considered accessory structures for the purpose of this bylaw. What is a fence? fence? Is it? Is well, that's what it says. That's what it must say in your regulations currently. A fence is considered a building? I, I don't believe all of the definitions that he has here are in our zoning bylaw. Hmm. I believe some of them he added because we don't have the definition. I, but I think all those ones he highlighted in yellow. How can you call a fence? 35 years ago, a fence was one of the most cantankerous subjects to discuss because <laughs> a farmer putting a fence up mm. is for mm -hmm. cattle is one thing, yeah. and you putting a fence up where your neighbor may be ticked off at you is a different category. Well, Joe, a fence is a fence. A building is a building. That's, yeah, that's I, why I, accessory structures would mean, does it mean it has to be set back as, as a structure from a side yard? I thought a fence could be put right on a property. Right. Accessory structure, yeah. I, I would have to look at your regulations. You can't put a building on a property. Um, but a, a fence should not be considered an accessory structure. Okay. No, because we do have this uh, section 5.2, no accessory building or structure except for a sign should be located within the required front yard area. Yeah. Or in any side area nearer to the side lot than 15 feet. But fence should be included in there. And the fence is a, how, yeah. Yes, because you want sometimes you want the fence be. along the front, along the road to keep, right. when it's set 50 feet back from the road. John, you ought to be an expert on fences. Wasn't there a question, your property versus the, uh, the well, trucking company that was going in? Wasn't there a question in? on your land? No, was it a height of a fence? No. No. The state regulations. They said over six foot is white fence. Okay. You got to get a permit. Anything under that, it's allowable. So that's state regulations. I, I, I still believe some of the definitions that aren't highlighted hmm. do not appear in our zoning bylaw. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if they could be in other places in your regulations that. I don't know. Joe, I, don't I, know. I think that, pertinent, but that, I'll, I'll check with him on that. That's I think the fences should be defined in here. I, I agree they should be defined, right? But, but I don't That's believe them. because. Well, there are two parts to it. We have to keep in mind if we just we can't just define it if it doesn't tie into something. That's correct. Right. We never did be. We were never able to come to an agreement on what a fence is and where it should be located. Because the farmers had one opinion, mm -hmm. neighbors had another mm -hmm. opinion. And even if we can get, even if we can settle on a definition of a fence, having a definition of a fence means nothing if there isn't a bylaw that says that it that governs fences. Good point. Yeah. So what do we do? Could you put a fence by permit only? No, that would be ridiculous. Yeah. That means every fence that somebody wanted to put yeah, up, on that. it would be it would be a big it would be a headache for everybody involved. Um, yeah, that's another one I can look at. I don't ever remember seeing the words in our bylaw. Fences are considered accessory structures for the purpose of this bylaw. I'm not saying it's not in there. I just can't think of where I where I've seen it. Before. But it shouldn't. I agree it shouldn't be an it should not be an accessory structure because mm -hmm. then it's gonna meet setback and that's mm -hmm. that's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. So we'll put a we'll just put a question mark next yep. to fence. Okay. I'll look into that more. Um, gross floor area is fine. No, what is that? Gross area is fine? Gross floor gross floor area. Okay. Um, I think it's not quite fine. It says excluding covered walkways, open roofed over areas, porches, and similar spaces. Pipe trenches, yes. Exterior terraces, no. Exterior terraces should be part of the gross floor area because restaurants, I know this definition is not in our bylaw. 
fact, it is contrary to our bylaws. Right. Okay. Exterior terraces must be considered part of the uh, square footage. Four square footage. Right. Open roofed over areas. This one needs a lot of work. Because if you refer to a house, it's one thing to refer to a business, it's another. Mm -hmm. The problem we have with up the road Esalon yeah. is because it's an open roofed area and it's an exterior terrace, they use it for seating and that's why there's not enough parking on the property. And our mm -hmm. site plan approval specifically includes these areas now as part of the gross floor area. It's okay. actually it's in the parking definition. So take a look at section 5.4.1. 5 5.4. So floor area is defined as gross square footage under cover as well as outdoor storage, outdoor display, outdoor seating, okay. outdoor food service, and any other outdoor facilities related to the use. Okay. Yeah. All right. That was one of those prime examples. The camel's nose was in the tent, as Jim mentioned. Oh, we just want to have summer serving cocktails, and they enclosed it. No, is that what happened? Yeah, <laughs> so then they doubled their, not quite doubled their capacity, but they didn't have enough parking. Well, between the open porch and then the open floor area, they right? doubled. They did, yeah. yeah. Hmm. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. Getting back to, all right, so we're on page six. Grade is fine, greenhouse is fine, groundwater. The group facilities, those new ones are fine. Um, yeah, as far as I couldn't okay. find anything that I disagreed with greatly on that. Um, hazardous waste. Um, do you want, I'm just looking at this now. Regulation of the Mass Hazardous Waste Management Act. Check and see if Mass General Laws Chapter um, 21C, I know hazardous waste is defined under 215, but I'm not sure if that's CFR or CMR 15. I think it's CMR 215. Yeah, it would be a CMR. Okay, so just make sure that the check 215 versus 21. I know that 215 is the one that actually defines hazardous okay. waste mm -hmm. uh, chemicals. All right. Okay, um, it, ha it actually uh, more than hazardous waste. It defines basically uh, chemicals that are qualified under the uh, VSQ. Very small quantity, large quantity, okay. and small quantity generators. Okay, no, 215 is the number that comes to my okay. mind. It's a, Those it's, are it's, all CMR though, right? I believe there's, I believe it's CMR 215, and there's, God, those books. Are, last time I printed one out was about three inches thick. It's probably bigger than that now. <laughs> so you don't want to print it out. Right. But it is extremely involved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Height is okay. Home business is okay. Um, oh, wait a minute. Under home business, the very last sentence shall require a special permit issued by the planning board and can, shall comply with all the following conditions. Oh. Mm -hmm. What conditions? I believe. That's I it. think they copied too much out of it. Right. Cut and Probably pasted not. too much. Yeah. What? Business, there's always a conditions attached to it. Right? No, 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 but it's in a definition. You don't put the con you don't put that. You don't simply don't put that that sentence. Oh, yeah. I think they copied something out of the def out of yep. the uh, our home business and didn't Probably delete that much. set yeah. that sentence. You're right. Under home occupation, um, you've got is carried out by the occupants of the building and not in any manner changing the residential character of the building, I believe, is carried out by the occupants of the building and has no other employees should be in, in, uh, put in right after has what? And has no other employees? 
the great is carried on by the occupants of the building mm -hmm. and has no other employees has no other employees and it's not in any manner changing the residential character of the building for home occupation okay. home business has employees in the lab last line same thing under home office no, addition following conditions oh yes yeah. No, okay. the home occupation is an electrician or a plumber that works out of his house. No, no employees on the site. Right. Yeah. Hospital, hotel. Yeah. Impervious surface. Um, hotel. Should we have any way of uh, limiting the number of days? For example, Homewood Suites uh, is coming in in the town and. Can they rent it by the year, a semester? For what? I guess okay. if somebody can afford it. Yeah. <laughs> that's expensive, no What's matter that? how you slice it. What's that? Renting Homewood Suites for staying in Homewood Suites for like two or three months. Yeah, that's right. That's a big box already. Yeah, but they're not going to. That's a good question. I, I was talking to Lax about that in the motel. He said that doesn't happen like that. They're basically too expensive. Right. Well, that the one next to Sully's restaurant, when it did have some difficult time, was turned in, turned into apartments. That was before yes. it became what it is today. Correct. Now that they're all associated with the national chains and they're, they're the quality of the rooms has a greatly improved. Well, they could lose the national chain qualifications if they decided not to update their facilities and then turn it into apartments. Yeah, but apartments are not allowed. That's right. So, so what, what we're saying is that if a motel morphs into apartments because somebody decides not to keep it up it makes a difference. It, the apartments are not allowed. You can't just convert something into an apartment. Yeah, I mean that, that's that's. I mean that's something that I don't think we should put wording into our zoning bylaws okay. to that's, that's, look for super worst case scenarios because there is enough checks I and totally balances with, this, I agree, with a yeah. zoning enforcement officer doing the job that should prevent that. Okay. Okay. I don't disagree with you that it could be a concern. I'm, I'm not. Oh, we gotta have some flexibility, right? Yeah. Um, impervious surface. Any surface that restricts natural rainwater penetration, infiltration, and or natural groundwater recharge. This includes rooftops, pavements, and any, any types of concrete, asphalt, bituminous concrete, any type so-called TRG, gravel, stone, or any type or size, brick or other surface that restricts or is designed to restrict natural grain water. TRG, gravel, and stone are not an impervious surface by any stretch of the imagination. Hard pack is, would it, that's ground up, uh, reclaimed black up. That's, that that, that's right, that's different. That's not TRG. Right. That's not, gravel and stone are certainly not, um, I could call it impervious. Okay. Um, brick. Uh, oh, look, wasn't that part of the issue we just had? Yes, yeah, Steve, Steve Lewis Subaru. And yeah. those are not, he's got TRG out there and Trap Rock, and they all have said, including the engineers, that is not impervious. That's exactly what I'm saying here. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so we want to take out TRG, gravel, and stone. Mm -hmm. Um, by two, by two minutes concrete, it says any types. So that would include the ground up stuff that John just mentioned. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, brick. Hmm. Is brick impervious? How can it be? Yeah, yeah, brick is. But wow. Between. Brick, brick is impervious. But what about the surface between, between it? Exactly. Right. Brick is not impervious. Brick is not impervious. <laughs> Or any other surface that restricts or is designated to restrict natural rainwater. I can live with the last set sentence. Okay. Okay, Good. but we're going to take out TRG, gravel, stone, and any size, and brick. Okay. And brick, you want to take, take out? Take out brick. Because brick is, brick itself, but what about the space between a brick? If they don't 
fill mortar. them. If they don't mortar them, right. and most places don't, they just lay them in right. with dirt around them, the and, water can and, and the oil and water can penetrate the yeah. crevices. Okay. Right. Um, junk. Jim. In conflict with our boat, our town bylaw. This is the definition. Well, they say <laughs> any rusted machinery. So we the farmers would be in big trouble. I, well, they are now because that bylaw passed. But that's a general bylaw that's and correct. a zoning bylaw. Right. So the question is, do we even get into it? That's right. a good point. That's, that's where I was going. Question. So you just had a new regulation? Yeah, there was a whole a whole bylaw just passed okay. the town meeting on, I forgot what it was what? called. What was it called? Nuisance. Nuisance uh -huh. something or other. Nuisance uses. Um, it's called Extem Extension of Amherst Mass. Uh, I would just put a question mark for the time being. Yeah. But we have, have junkyards. We do have junkyards. We do have junkyards. Yes. We, don't, we don't define junk. A junkyard only can be in uh, industrial, industrial zone. zone. Right, and right. Where's the industrial zone? Yeah, we, we, don't, we don't address junk in anything in our bylaw current right now that I'm aware of, so that's a good point. But since we do have a junkyard, we, since we do address junkyards, yes. we do need a definition. For junk, for junk, yeah, junk we, need yard. A, we need a definition of a junkyard, not junk. Yes. Yeah. Okay, that's Anybody good. can call your stuff your car, you can call that junk. Right, okay, so we need a definition for junk, yeah. junk yard. Call those right. right extractor of junk. Sometimes they are. <laughs> Find out tomorrow morning. <laughs> if it starts, they don't. Okay, call it junk. Next one on limited manufacturing. I'm not quite sure about this one. Any manufacturing activity related to research uses. Where did where, where did the research uses come in? Don't they do that on that park on? Yes, that's a research park. I I, don't, I agree with that, but. Why, why is limited manufacturing only related to research? That's, I well, assume that was what was in your regulations, but wait, I'd have to look at that. Well, we did have to change. Remember when the research was coming into what was once upon a time called the Dead Mall, Mountain Farms Mall, and there was some research facilities wanted to come in, and it was not included in our business yeah, section, but it was in the industrial mm -hmm. section. Limited manufacturing. Limited, limited manufacturing. Yeah. We have manufacturing or industrial use, right? Mm -hmm. which is allowed only in the industrial, industrial district. Yeah. Okay. We don't address limited manufacturing any place mm -hmm. in our zoning okay. bylaw that I'm aware of. All right. I'll look at this then in some more detail, too. Ooh. Yeah, and how the manufacturing define it? That's what I'm looking for. I mean, one of them was they were manufacturing. Manufacturing dust is not defined. Measuring dust particles. It's not. Huh? It's not. Interesting. And that's what you have in there. Yeah, we okay. we, we allow manufacturing, mm -hmm. but we don't define it. But we define limited manufacturing. Right. So maybe we should have manufacturing mm -hmm. instead. Yeah, we need a definition for manufacturing. Now, okay. while we're in there, okay, now that's, yes, that's fine. Lot, that's good. Lot, okay, we have two here. And the manufacturing is defined where it's located, right? Yes. Yeah, we don't even we have, have two for lot, right. The, yeah, the yellow one is a much better definition. Okay, good. And the two for lot area as well, which you'll see he um, put a lot area minimum below, which I think is designed to just sort of clarify. You had sort of combined previously. Yeah. Wait, wait a minute. What happened to, uh, okay. Wait a minute, lot area. 
what happened to the, all the upland and all the rest of the stuff? So I took it out of there, and is that so? I thought that this definition below was addressing that. Nope. Shall not, shall not be counted. Shall not be counted toward the minimum lot area land under permanent water. <coughs> land bordering wetlands. Land within public right of way. No. I guess it is different, isn't it? Yes. Okay. So you want to make sure that the conservation commission was the one that wanted the lot area defined back in 1988. Alexandra Dawson was extremely specific about this particular item. I remember that. I'm sure Joe and okay. Joe do. So we should probably keep it unless there's a good you thing know, not to be done. Mm -hmm. That's fine, I think. Lot area minimum seems to be, why do we need that? That's, why, that's why wouldn't you have a, a minimum size of a lot? We do. Right. But this excludes so much that I know, it, it's like, I could see calling it lot area buildable. But if somebody has all of this land, that's not considered their lot? Why don't you just define it as a, a buildable lot? That's my point. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should call it lot area minimum buildable, something like that. Add, yeah, the word, add that word that. in there, okay? Mm -hmm. Because to say, I'm not trying to be wise here, but no, if just a lot area minimum, does that mean if somebody comes in and includes all of this stuff and they want to sell a lot, Right. Just for farming, right? It's not a lot, right? Okay, it's a good point. Um, so add buildable, yeah. Lot area building, lot corner. Can't you sell a lot that's not e that you don't want to build on it, and it doesn't meet the, the measurements that could be used for another purpose? <coughs> yes, that's what lot area would be, yeah. So we take out the highlighted lot area and use the one above it. Mm -hmm. Okay, lot corner. Oh, God. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Lot depth. Yeah. The uh, the lot corner, Jim. Yep, the yard adjacent to each street will be considered front yard. Well, are we picking out one would be a front yard, uh, no. one could be a side yard once upon a time, or is that in the... You no, know, we, we've talked about it, but... We never, never did anything about it. Okay. Does a corner lot have any advantage or disadvantage of a lot frontage? It has a disadvantage Or it can take and take either one, the side lot frontage or the... Well, that's what no, we were... We, we, never, we, we never, the way it reads, in case, of, in case of corner lots, the front yard depth shall be observed from all bordering streets. That so, was very contentious once upon a time before even I got on the planning board and that went through a legal muster with Attorney Padova, I think. Okay. So how do they determine which one was, which, which, the one is greater becomes the front well, no, they both, they both, both. They're both front lots. Both front. Yeah. So exactly. you can observe 50 foot from both lots. Many, many people that some of the... Well, you mean if you got the first aid the corner of East Street there. Yes. His frontage is on Route 9. Right. But also his frontage is on East Street? Correct. So he's going to be oh, fifty. Thanks. He's going to be fifty foot back from East Street and fifty foot back from Russell Street. Otherwise, it's fifteen feet. That's correct. Yes, 
And what happens sometimes, I mean, most corner lots are developed already, so it's, it's, it's a moot point in many mm -hmm. cases, but the, uh, they'll go for a zoning variance sometimes on that. However, if somebody has a frontage today and they put a new street in, now the new street is considered a side yard, side yard, 15 foot. Okay. That's right. Let me give, even, even says let that give you an example. The house across uh, Diggers there, that house is going to be knocked down someday because it's for sale. Yeah. Now, what is the frontage in the, the boat? The frontage is on Route 9 and East Street? No. Yes. Okay. Two things. Frontage and front yard setback. Yes. You can have frontage on, you only need frontage on one street. You need your 175 feet on one street. Doesn't matter how far, how much frontage you have on the other street. But you have to have a 50 foot setback from both streets. But an existing lot? Yes. New construction on an existing new lot. Yeah, for, for an existing lot, like I said, is grandfather, but if you add a new house onto it, if they tear that house down and put a new house up completely, then it needs to be 50 foot from East Street yeah. and Route 9. there's not enough land. Maybe, but they only have 50 foot depth to, off of Russell Street. Right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And so, it, they're, they're, that's a prime candidate for a variance. That yeah. falls within the definition mm -hmm. of a variance. Right. right. Because that's existing. It, right. Well, or that it's a hard, sh it's unusual shape or topography yeah. that's not shared oh, with other God. lots in the neighborhood. Right. Okay. Yep. All right. All right. Lot depth. The mean horizontal distance measured perpendicular right now. Oh. Front line between the front and rear line. Such a measure from a portion of the front line. Oh, boy, I can't look anymore. The portion of the lot that has a depth of the front line required. Oh, okay. So by way of history, this used to be called the Zagrodnik Square. That's. It did? That's. Many years ago, people used to have various That's lot, lot configurations, such that you could not even get a house on the lot. So they would all have to go for variances. So that's when I came up with the idea. You've <laughs> got to fit a square in there so you can yes. fit a house in there. Yes. And uh, that good. OK. That was lot frontage is good. Oh, wait a uh, should we take out frontage then? Oh, or is it still? I guess frontage is still. Yeah, that's the square. Interior layout. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay, going back to lot, yeah. lot frontage. Okay. In the case of a subdivision lot approved under subdivision that's control changed. law, the lot frontage requirement may be reduced by not more than 20% for lots situated around the cul de sac, provided they are part of the plan shown up with subdivision plan. The minimum lot depth must be achieved from the front of the principal structure. What does that mean? They can reduce the frontage by 20%. If your houses are sitting around a cul de sac, yep. they wouldn't need as much frontage. So they, need tr they could have 20% less than is allowed. Why? Because it goes around? So even even, even if you took the, the arc situated. of the circle, like, we measured the whole circle, the arc of the circle. Right. Yeah, you measure the arc of the circle, and like, let's say we got 200 feet of frontage. So you measure 200 feet of circumference. Right, you could do that. That's the way we do it today. Okay. We don't want to reduce it by 20%. Okay. okay. You don't measure in a straight line. Though. Right, we don't measure in a straight line in the cul-de-sac. I think what they're talking about is like a straight line. Okay. I believe, I as opposed to a, cir a circumference line, but it's not clear. Okay. But we don't, we, we use the circumference, partial circumference. Okay. Okay, so if you got, let's say you got a 600 foot circumference of a circle, they would need one third of the circle. And a 200 foot. Okay, so we're gonna take out the entire thing in a, in a control. That whole section. Right, yeah. in the case of subdivision. Lot interior, lot layout. In addition to the minimum lot area, depth, width, and frontage requirements, lots laid out, lots shall be laid out in such a manner that a square with the sides equal to the minimum frontage requirement for the zoning district in which it is located can be placed within a lot with at least one point of the square lying in front lot line. 
That would be so. That's a change. That's, that's a major change. If we got a 200 okay. foot zoning, so it has, that's that's a 200 foot square as opposed to a 150 foot 150, square. 150. So a lot. So okay. take so layout and depth should be combined into one, and it should include 150 by 150. Yeah. So that lot layout, you, you can combine as you want, but but it basically should be read. In addition to the minimum lot area depth, width, and frontage requirements, lots shall be laid out in such a manner that a square 150 by 150, as to that, it, it's in our zoning bylaw. Okay. So you're going to take out from that point on with the sides equal, all the rest of that is out. Because we don't want a 250, I mean a 200. Or a hundred and or hundred and seventy five foot square. We want to stay with the one fifty because we find out that that one fifty square is huge in a lot of lots. Okay. We have we have some two hundred foot lots that sometimes it barely fits. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And using that one fifty square, when you put it onto could be the circumference of the cul de sac, mm -hmm. it takes care of probably it probably addresses your that other issue. the other yeah. issue. Okay. okay. All right, so it should just be a square 150. By 150 feet, feet, yes. Okay. So should you combine lot depth and lot layout as one? Or lot layout and lot frontage might be one. But you can decide which is the bay, or just leave it as that. Which I could, I'm with this. Or lot area. Yeah, you, you have a lot depth in. The 150 is. You got you just get frontage there, right? He's got frontage. He's got frontage. So lot layout might be combined with lot area. Well, or you could. I don't know you can leave, just leave it at lot layout. There's a separate line in the zoning right now. The lot layout is, okay. is that for okay. subdivision that you talk about there? The what? That's it for subdivision, right? Any lot. Oh, lot area. Yeah. And for approval, not required. And for approval, not required. To be buildable. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Lot width. Okay, under lot width. That's bills. That has the 20% reduction. Uh, and, and under lot with you take out the last sentence in the case of the cul de sac with 20% yeah. reduction. Okay. See, so I did read these things. Yeah. yeah. So, Good, I'm glad. <laughs> but that you know it way better than me. turns back into the minimum. So we got into a. Um, Yeah, lot width is exactly what you. Yeah, you take out that last sentence exactly what you want in there. Okay. Yeah, that that was just where we got into the. Uh, at some point, the um, as we were changing frontage and width, we ended up leaving width at 150 feet for everything, even though the frontage went up to the larger amounts. Right. And I don't remember if there was a re rationale for doing that. Yeah, the lots on. Uh, Hartsbrook. Hartz well, that, I mean, that was why we adopted the... the Which one? Uh, Randall? No, no, no. It was uh, Hartsburg, the further Hartsburg up. School. It's, uh, Hartsburg Hartsburg school. Between the Hartsbrook School and the West, they laid out some lots, and they were off, they're actually accessed through the Hartsbrook driveway. That was before we had a common driveway bylaw and before we had a lot with bylaw. So there are these things that look like snakes but they start off with a 150 foot square at the street mm -hmm. and then they go up in a long narrow line mm -hmm. to way out back um, so we got rid of that but the uh, the other question here is just i suppose it's not a huge deviation but for example in the aquifer protection district you have to have 200 feet of frontage but the lot could still narrow down like a piece of pie to 150. To 150, where the where the structure is. Well, I thought the one had oh, to be just so many square, square feet. But don't we define that differently? 
in the bylaw someplace, but when you put a thing in, we, 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 we amended it someplace. Right. That's over. But this the square, point, this, this point, square footage is greater, right? And that's what we're going to be changing. As opposed to the minimum lot with oh. like the minimum lot frontage. Okay, that was. Uh, Do we have lot frontage or lot front? Oh, that frontage, yeah, on the previous oh, one. Oh, my God. The other one was, uh, Mike, what's the street uh, on Route 47, just a little south of Laurel Drive that is to the west? It's got five or six houses. Oh, the where? You know where Laurel Drive is. Goes towards South Hadley, probably. And on the right, there's a street. There. On the right hand side. Oh, yes, yeah, that's street. that's a common driveway. Yeah. Right here. Yes. Okay. At no point. Okay, no, no point. Burke Burke front lot lies the rear of the principal structure. Does the lot have the width? That was Birkin's project, wasn't it? So it's lot width or is it frontage width? Lot width? It is. Uh, should I have a lot width? Less than the middle of lot width, so it's it's width, not frontage. Okay. So, so that so this is consistent with what that says. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Okay. There's mobile home. Mobile home. A new suggestion. Yeah. This is mobile this. home built on a chassis and containing complete electrical, plumbing, and sanitary facilities designed to be installed on a temporary or permanent foundation for permanent living quarters. For this one, so something says residential living unit. This that's is like a dwelling unit. So that's really the only change. Yeah. Is, that, is that on pylon still or not? Permanent foundation. A temporary. Or a temporary. Yeah. It's not a temporary. Pylons pylons could yeah. Temporary. Would be temporary. Right. But that's, but that's, yeah, the only difference is the dwelling unit versus a residential living unit. Right. So but that's, that's consistent with what we have right. today. Okay. Okay, good. Motel, municipal uses. different lot lines, side yards, you know, setbacks, those things. So it follows that section of definitions and just kind of helps to clarify it. More frontages. Yeah. So if anybody has questions. Yeah. Okay. I think it's helpful. Okay. Yeah. Um, Under parking space, your parking area is 10 foot, I mean 9 foot by 21. We use 10 by 20 in TDR. Okay, under parking space. Why uh, are so big? 10 by 20. That was just the number we used. Okay, so what do you use? Say 10 by 20. 10 by 20. But all the standards are 8 by 20. 9 by, nine by 21 is it's more of a standard. Mm. But that's what you use. Well, the ten by twenty. That's what we we use nine by ten by twenty, and we use that as a round figure for TDR. Okay. Um, it's easier to figure the numbers. Too. Yeah, exactly. That was easier okay. to figure. Um, I mean, it's not a huge difference. Well, some of them are ten because, for example. Uh, yeah. Stop and shop has the dual lines there. So. Eight, eight, eight. The, the nine by twenty-one is, is more of a standard for what we've seen recently, and eleven square feet difference. But we don't define parking space in our zoning bylaw. 
the only place we define parking space in the zoning by, well, actually, the only place we define parking space in a zoning bylaw is TDR. Okay, then it should match that. So it should, right, it should right. be 10 by 20, yes. Mm -hmm. 100, 200 square feet. So that means they're going to pay more for TDR? No. Why? If you require more because parking, we, they're going to buy. We don't know. They're not buying parking spaces. They're buying. They're buying square feet. Right. So the more square feet. So the more so, so if we're if they're, they're buying if they're buying two thousand square feet, they might be able to fit an extra. They'll almost be able to fit an extra parking space in. They can fit eleven cars as opposed to ten cars. But that's fine because they're buying space, not number of spaces. And you don't want to have parking space size defined for any other reason. No, because we we just we did we did we use parking area. I see. Not parking space. Okay. And the way we define parking area, I don't have a drawing in front of me. I could I, at the end of this, I'll define parking okay. area. Okay. Any open space used for parking motor vehicles. Put a star next to parking area. We may need to define so that, that a little bit better. That includes, by our well, definition, let's do it right now. that includes the stalls and the aisles for turning and for backing and yeah. turning. Okay. So you but it does not include the ring roads. Right. Okay. Or the so this is a driveway mm -hmm. coming in, and these are parking areas here, and these are parking areas here, and these are parking areas. This is an island. Mm -hmm. This is gravel or grass or otherwise. And these are the boundaries. This is a driveway in. This is a driveway out. Mm -hmm. This area is defined as parking including this past driveway. Let, let's move this around for, for clarity. Okay. Back up, right? okay. okay, so the cars, the pass aisle for the vehicles to go in and out of the parking spaces is included in the parking. Okay. This driveway at the end, the turnaround, is not included. The driveway coming in and out are not included. But the actual parking areas okay. and the pass space mm -hmm. between the two parking areas, or single parking areas, the case may be. What is if there's a single? The, typically, if there's just a, if there's parking here, and there is normally just in like this, then this would be the parking area. But if this is double wide, what if it's just single? Single wide, then the single parking drive through is included. Okay? Because no, very few people are putting in extra pavement that they don't need. They're making this area, in other words, if this parking space, let's draw in the picture. You understood the double parking. Mm -hmm. You have an island, same picture. Drive around. If there's only enough space for single parking, it depends on the width of this. People are, I don't know of any, any business that's making this, this is typically like 10 foot wide. Mm -hmm. And then the parking area is 21 or whatever it may be, depending on the single parking. Okay. Businesses are not making this double wide and only putting in parking on half. If right. you understand what I'm saying, yeah. they're, they're, that's almost like a, there's an awful lot of blacktop extra there right. that's not needed. So this would be a single drive and parking. This would still all be included as parking. This turnaround would not, and a driveway in, driveway out would not. Now, for some reason, somebody made this double wide. Again, we haven't seen that. From a planning board point of view, I would say half of the half of the drive is parking. The other half is not because this is not being designed for parking. This is being designed as a driveway. Do you see? Do you follow me? I think so. In other words, <laughs> this this area is for cars to come in yeah. and back out. The, the island can't be. The right. island is not included. Oh, no. Right. 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 Yeah. Yep. But this second is basically so. This is like a two-lane highway. One lane would be included as the parking. The second lane would not because this is not being used for parking in any way, shape, or form. It's a driveway. Right. Okay. So we need to define parking area more. Jim, what 
Jim, why don't you try a definition and send it along? To that that might this parking area may need a picture. Okay. And then maybe from the picture, as an independent person, you can say you could put words to it. Okay. Because we might be too buried in our right. our um, idea as to really give it a good definition. It may not come out right. Right. Okay. So, so you, you don't have a graphic already. No. 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 Just that the 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 excuse me the the, the several um, surveyors and engineering firms that typically come in here understand that because we've worked with them on it. The new ones that have never um, been in here before, when we explain to them, okay, we get it. But somebody that's never had it explained to them may not have any understanding right. of this. It is different. Yeah. Okay. But it does give us some wiggle room, whereas if you, for example, you heard the storage people saying, we don't need that parking, as opposed to some restaurants that need a lot more parking. So we don't get into that, I need this many, I need that many. But if they don't need it, they still have to have provisions for right. in case it changes that you, so you need it. Exactly right? Exactly correct. Because, because there's we no other place you can go. No other place. Right. 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 And many things have changed already. Okay. So I, I just want to go back a second. I don't like the definition of owner that you have there, and I'm not sure where we have, where it relates to in the bylaw. Okay. Um, What's that, Bill? Owner. The definition of owner is just too broad. Um, well, what's, the, what's the legal term of an owner? Do, the bigger question is, do we use it in our bylaw? Yeah, I guess that's part of it. Why are okay, we? Okay, I'll look. Uh, I don't think we do. I and, don't either, but um, it's scary when you've been on this for so long that you know certain words aren't even in our bylaw. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, what's right, just I'll a, take a look at that. What's the legal term of an owner? That's all. You know, I would normally consider it as the person who has title to the property. And well, that, whatever that, the legal title, term is. That does not appear here. I'm talking about agents, attorneys, purchasers, devisees, trustees, lessees, or any person having vested or legal or equitable interest. Um, so yeah. that's it should, should be, it should be defined, right? If it yeah. if it's in the bylaw, it should be defined. Right. Yeah. If it's not even in the right. bylaw, we don't need it. We don't need it. Okay, under open space, going back up top. Uh, I guess you get, your highlighted one is the one we want to go with. We don't Correct. need we don't need a twenty percent because that's already in the bylaw and in other sections. Correct. Okay. Do we have anything in this bylaw for snow storage? No, because it's not in the bylaw either. I don't think the word. Oh, I take that back. I don't know. Might be something that's like plant food. No, there's nothing in there for snow no. storage. Okay, we can get to that one. We keep that in mind when we get to there mm -hmm. under rest. Okay. Yeah. Um, personal and consumer service establishment. It says, you know, staff providing service to the general public, such as hairdressing, catering, cleaning, legal, financial counseling, accounting, or technical support. What does technical support mean? I would assume related to computers or anything. I know. Right? Well. Define. I, I <laughs> want to define technical mm -hmm. support. Okay. Jim, before we Fire. move on, uh, you were leaning to the open space, the one that's highlighted. The highlight, yellow. yes. But one of the things there's always concern about is the... Uh, the last sentence? The, the designated wetlands and designated uh, uh, storage of water area, you know, detention ponds. We, that should be included. 
because people always want to include that in their uh, green space. In, in our bylaws, it, it specifically... What is it, retention or detention? Either one. Both, both, both would not be... Well, included. one retains for a little while... Re retention means that the water sits on a property till it evaporates. Detain means it sits on a property till it's eventually drained off through a pipe. No. Detain versus retain. Um, yeah, the Hadley Police will detain you, but the sheriff will retain you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so good. you want to add that at the end after water courses? N not including um, detail, return. Oh, not including. Not including. Okay, so that should be at the very end. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not including retention, detention ponds, or, or water courses. Or designated wetlands. Designated wetlands. Yeah. Okay. Place of amusement is okay. Primary structure. <laughs> principal building structure. Use principal. Professional office. The office of a recognized profession. <laughs> What is a recognized profession? Uh, that's a good we, if you ask the members of this board alone, you would get a huge. Uh huh. Right. I'm gonna start off with a BS artist. That's a good <laughs> okay. Um, recognized profession to me means like a tradesperson, not a doctor, a lawyer. An engineer oh, or well, otherwise. That's interesting. I wouldn't think of it that way. Why? <laughs> okay. A lawyer is a profession. That's a my that's my point. But the way this is used in the bylaw, I don't think that is what, from my point of view, and I'm only speaking for me, okay. should be a tradesperson as opposed to a doctor, lawyer, or an engineer, or one of those professions. Yeah, because the way, let me explain that in a bylaw, that. Those are permitted uses, not permitted uses, but they're allowed uses in a home occupation or something like that. Going back to the original idea that a carpenter or an electrician or one of those tradespeople would have their office in their house, virtually nobody would come to see them except on super rare occasion, and they typically go to the customer to service them. That's again, for home occupation. Again, yes. Home, home occupation, home business. I'm using that as a general home business. Okay. okay. With the general idea that there is very little customer traffic coming to see them. No, right. No, right. No, no cars, no automobile, right. stuff like that. You get an engineer, a lawyer, a doctor, or one of those types, or accountant. They don't come to you. You come to them. And you greatly increase right. the traffic going to that dwelling. So that could, would be a professional office, built, like a professional office building, not a home occupation. Well, what does professional office refer to in a zoning bylaw? I don't know what professional, yeah, I, would, I don't know. Okay, what, what, we'll I, look at that, but I, w I would assume that it would be not a home occupation. Uh, right, again, uh, I'm not check. sure of a pro the word well, professional. So the recognized profession comes from one section of the bylaw. Right. And our general office space, which would include professional offices, is in another section of the bylaw. Oh. And this conflates them. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. So we just want to separate them accordingly to okay. what. Okay. Okay. Well, I, have, I have no, you know. No, sir. Okay. You're right, and it's becoming fuzzy or cloudy or, I mean, people you know, and, and, doing and, computer work you know, at home. Back, back, sure. in, back I mean, in 1961, you know, whoever I thought, I mean, you had engineers, doctors, and lawyers back then, but you didn't have computer tech people and uh, uh, how many other things, right. you know. Um, you know, a CPA was a rare animal back then. A financial advisor was probably non-existent. Do we have dress making and candy <laughs> making as a... As a Business? That's traditional home occupation. That's the yeah. original home occupation. Okay. How, many, how many candy makers and dressmakers do we have in town? Yeah. You know, um, <laughs> people make candy, but no sense. Right. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay, we'll look at that. Um, 
Everything else on that page I'm good with. Self storage, okay, self storage. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I think most of all in this airplane. Yeah, everything else, what well, we're half story. Okay, street. Street, I'm good with okay. substantial improvement. Substantial improvement is defined as 25% of the original um, value. That's what this says. Oh, wait a minute. Improvement to a structure or building which exceeds 25% of the original footprint. Substantial. No, substantial. That's missing something there. Approved structures which exceed 25% of the original footprint. What does that mean? If I if I improve 25% of the footprint, that's a may substantial improvement. Right. What is? That's just as fuzzy as substantial. Well, it doesn't appear anywhere in our bylaws. Say if you're referring to. Site plan that's ten percent, so you don't want it to conflict with any. No, no, well, I'm I'm saying improvement to a structure or building which exceeds twenty five percent of the original footprint of such structure, structure or, or building. building. Yeah. yeah. So if I have a thousand square foot building and I have four windows in it and I replace one of them, that's twenty five percent. Of the structure, it's well, not exceeding the structure of the uh, the size of the footprint. Yeah, that's the footprint. Okay, so what we have here is actually a couple of right. different standards. Uh, for site plan approval, we can waive site plan approval if the change affects less than ten percent of the existing floor area. Right. In the village center overlay district, we define it as, we define it as 33 percent of the current assessed value. Yes, that's what I'm more concerned with: is the value as opposed to as opposed to how do you affect? What does affecting 25 percent of the footprint mean? So, well, if the building was 100 square feet and you added. 25% additional square feet. To what if it? I took 25% of that footprint and put a new floor in it? Is that a substantial improvement? I don't think so, according to this definition. I disagree with you. Okay, so I'm let's... affecting 25% of the footprint. All I'm saying is this should be a value of the building, not a size of the building. Okay. So, and, and I might part with you there that we might want a double standard that there are some projects that are not expensive but are going to change the, you know, for That's example, adding the young men's club pavilion to an existing restaurant. Um, it may okay. not exceed 33% of the uh, assessed value but it might double the floor area. Okay, so Th that that's that's a good point. All that substantial improvement needs some needs some investigation. Right, I think a lot of towns do it this way. Whether this is the specific, you know, best definition, okay, it may not be the case. We we, we, we need to look at substantial improvement. Okay. Just yep. a good point. Without without belaboring it right here yep. now. And for the most part, this this definition section is wonderful. 
Good. I mean, we got yeah, we we got to do some tweaking right here yeah, and there, but of course. I mean, we're going to be. And you'll probably have to do more later. Oh, we're going to always be tweaking this. Right. We're going to find oh, gee, exactly. that's not good. Can't okay, that's fine. Right now. You know, right. I, we're just having, having zero versus having something is right. an improvement. Okay. All right. Yes. So we are on trailer. Uh, yeah, the right definition. Way. That's fine. Thank you. Oh, wait, wait, back up. Snow removal. All right. We have we nothing. We should add that. Huh? We need to add something that's snow removal. Snow removal. So is there something? Snow, to snow removal there? or two, uh, two things. We can't just add a definition of snow removal if it doesn't relate to well, something. That's right. the I, I think site plan approval has snow, something about snow in it. Section 8. What is that? Section one? I think section eight is site plan approval. Some problems back when the gospel was alive with the malls, with, with areas of. Uh, that was the DEP regulation. To snow, to the snow. store. Yes. But it's just like where do where we can place you put it? it? Right. In other words, some farmers were taking it on their property. With salt on it. Yes. And everything else. Mm -hmm. So right, this one needs a little bit more research, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we'll see if it's uh, referred to. Is there the a DEP regulation or? No, there is. Well, there may be. Oh, um, trees, um, trees or anything. And it depends how it relates yeah, to regulations. Yeah. It may or may not. Yeah, we, we never, that, that, was, that was put in many, many years ago. We never really got into that one much. You're right. Do you think it should be done? I think it'd be a good idea to affect to address it because we start removing a lot of these, these big trees. They're taking a lot. The, the root ball is huge, and the dirt is. After ten or fifteen years, you can actually see a depression in the you soil. Just look right behind the golf station. Look, just look on the dump. The roads on a dump where where the water, where they've taken out some big trees. How much lower the ground is. So with the snow removal, you're mostly concerned about the storage of the snow. Yeah, well, on, on I'm, site. I'm, I'm, looking, I'm looking for where it appears in a bylaw so we can utilize it. Yeah, I don't yeah see two things. So number one, adequate place for s snow storage. Yeah. And number two, if there's not adequate, people will say, well, we'll have it trucked off. Where? Where? Right. Uh, is that our responsibility or is that the responsibility of the Conservation Commission, or is it a state regulation? But it creates Ooh. another headache. Ooh, we do have snow removal. It's not in site plan approval. It's in Africa. Oh. Good thing Joe's over there talking. Sometimes a blind squirrel can find an acorn. Oh, boy, here we go with his jokes. All <laughs> perfection. What section are you on? Twelve. Twelve point five point nine. Stockpiling and disposal of snow or ice brought in from outside the district is not allowed. So what do you do with it? That means you don't bring it into the Acker for protest district. If you, if you well, 
you may not be able to deal with this all right how you want in the definition section right. no no it somewhere else yeah. Yeah. having in the definitions means nothing if it doesn't right. tie it that was one right. thing i was going to suggest so i'll just ramble for a while while jim's looking okay um what i would like to see is um what i'll call two-way pointers where applicable so that for example some of these definitions about um, uh, the home occupation, um, but you, they've taken some of them out. Where you, where you have taken a definition out of a section, mm -hmm. um, and we're going to then amend the bylaw to delete the reference. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see just a a footnote or something saying "see definitions." You know, we can do, delete the definitions, but leave the heading and say, see definition section. You, and what's the last? That doesn't apply yeah. to all of them. Well, I think they're, they're, they're they're some, some are being taken out, some are not. So there are no solar definitions in here, yep. but there are definitions of, you know, for example, accessory apartment definition has been taken out of the accessory apartment mm -hmm. bylaw and put into the definition section. Good point. Um, yeah. So I would like to, and mm -hmm. the whole bed and breakfast definitions are being taken out of the bed and breakfast section mm -hmm. and okay. putting into the definitions. Yeah, that should be there so somewhere. So I'd like to see in the definition, say, say C-section 22, and in the bed and breakfast, C-definition section, um, so that you know people who aren't used to cross-referencing and looking for so, definitions everywhere. I don't know. I, I understand about putting it in the regular section to refer to the definition section. If you put for every definition, every place that's referenced in the regulations, it might just make this really for For some, but for example, the four bed and breakfast definitions, if you're going to take them out of the bed and breakfast section, yep. they only relate back to the bed and breakfast section. Right. So for these, you could clearly say C section, you know, whatever it is. Okay. Maybe not for all of them, but all right. So that's that's actually the that's one of the things that has stopped us from getting too far along with the definition section. Sometimes is the more comprehensive you make the definition section, um, you can make everything else shorter. But you know you have you your last page on your last page. Yes. You you laid out. Um, Definitions remaining in their own section. In fact, you say section 22, bed and breakfast facilities. On the last page, you say okay, you yeah. left those definitions in their section. Mm -hmm. But on page uh, two, you've taken them out. Hmm. You put them in this section. Mm -hmm. So it's just that. Um, yeah, I'm not sure why that is. Yeah, it's just that I'd like there to be some predictability so that people would. Um, I, I'd like there to be some predictability so that you aren't taking, you aren't stripping definitions out of some sections but not out of others uh, when it, you know, I don't know what it adds to the definition section to strip those out, especially when Larry said he was leaving them in. So, well, um, isn't the idea of this so people can easily understand this and find things besides us? Well, yes. Uh, it, yeah, that's that's the point. But if you if you start taking definitions out of the sections, if you start taking section specific definitions out of some sections but not out of others, you've created right. a. And I'm not sure exactly why. It's yeah. That Are you going to one section for all definitions? No, they're not. Well, so mostly, but not so what, are still so. what I'm saying here is that in this bottom of page two, there are four definitions relating to the bed and breakfast bylaw. Yeah. Those definitions have no applicability to anything else in the bylaw. But, 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 but bed and breakfast. And here in the yeah. end, it. Larry put in a section. I'm going to pick on Larry because I know you didn't right. do all Thank this. Right. Uh, definitions remaining in their own sections: bed and breakfast facilities. Yeah. So, either you're taking them out, you're taking every definition out and putting it in the definition section, or you're not. Right. And 
if you have some definitions that are just exclusive to one section right. of the bylaw, they probably don't have to be in the definition section. Right, but it, it sounds like to me if a, if a person was looking for something, bed and breakfast, and here's all the definitions for it, it's easier to deal with instead of running back all over the other. And, and that, that's perfectly legitimate. It, it, then you, you know, it's... You want to make it user-friendly, you know, yeah. I mean, just... Yeah. There, there's so no, there's no good answer to either question here, because they're both valid. John's point is valid, and Bill's point is valid. Um, I think most zoning regulations do have a definition section. Right? Uh, yes, they, they, they do. And I've read many of them, and they're, it's a mixed bag. Yeah, I'm sure. And um, I think because maybe they haven't had that discussion about what do you move and what do you right. what do you not move. Mm -hmm. right. um, so we'll try and make it as consistent as possible, and I'll understand yeah. better why some. Yeah. So, John, there. To, your, to your point, if you if you look if you want to put a solar field in, and you don't care about anything else, right? If you, the definition section is not as helpful because the terms can be separated by five pages. Mm -hmm. Whereas you look at the solar section and all your definitions are on one page. Um, but you want something like dwelling or accessory use. That, that, you know, some of them definitely belong in a central location. Because mm -hmm. they, they appear throughout the zoning bylaw. Mm -hmm. What's very specific section one maybe should go back to that section. Something to consider. Yeah, I will find out if there's right. rationale for the bed and breakfast or any of those other ones that yeah. are like that. Yeah. Because if, for example, I noticed none of the solar definitions came mm -hmm. over. They mm -hmm. did stay in their section. Yeah. And the marijuana dispensary yeah. stayed in their yeah. section. Um, mm -hmm. Overlay districts. Okay. Yeah. Use accessory. Um, I don't like the highlighted definition. Okay. Not to exceed 40% of the area of the total use of the structure. Do you realize how large some houses are in Hadley? 40% of a 4,000 square foot house is a lot. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, but you, uh, as an accessory, you only allow 900 square feet. Right. right. But this definition gives them 40% of the house. So if you've got a 2,000 square foot house, or a, a 3,000, 4,000, let's say a 3,000 square foot house, your accessory use can be about 1,400 square feet. Did that contradict? Yes. Yeah. Yes, exactly. That's why I'm saying I don't like the use. I like the original accessory use. Okay. Or maybe, maybe we take out and modify somehow that last sentence. Mm -hmm. That might make sense. Okay. Combine the one we have with the first sentence that does. I like the first sentence. That's 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 good. Okay. But I don't like the one about the forty percent. Yep. And somehow put them together. I mean, we don't need the. The dressmaking, I agree, right. some of those things like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, All right. So we can figure out how to make that work right. better. Okay. Non conforming, that's you. Yeah, use principle, the highlighted use is better, no question. The variance, yard, front yard. Oh, wait a minute, front yard.
that was a garage back. I just want to that myself. To the front yard? Yeah, minimum unoccupied. I, I think so, I like. So it's almost like we don't need to define front yard because front yard setback has nothing to do with the front yard, really. Yeah. I like our front yard, okay. our rear yard, and our side yard better than the high yes. end ones. That's right. Rear now, yard line, we don't use the word. Yard, we don't, I don't even know the yard line appears in the bylaws. A line parallel to the lot, hmm. a line parallel to a lot line, a distance therefrom equal to the depth of the required yard. A line parallel to a lot line, a distance therefrom equal to the depth of the required. What in the world is yeah, that question? Is that in the diagram? Well, the, the rear yard, Jim, Jim or whoever, which one do you like better, the highlighted I, one? I like our rear yard, side yard, and front yard better. So, okay, the rear yard required unoccupied space or area between the lot, between the rear lot line and the rear side. So, unoccupied space. You could have an accessory building there with that. How does that mean? Whereas, I don't, I don't think that would really affect it. Okay. Whereas the highlighted I'm one, the new one, the says the principal yeah. building. I don't see a definition for lot line. So I'm looking at the diagram, and the diagram shows a side yard line and a rear lot line. A lot separating a lot from a street right of way. Rear lot line and side lot line. Okay, and that's the lot line. And the yard line, side so yard line. Lot lines. Oh, and a rear line yard line, too. Yeah. Right right They're in the there. Lot. The lot line, rear lot line, and the side lot line. That's what exactly is the end. Okay. But a yard line, parallel to a lot line, distance there from the depth of the required. Okay, the yard line doesn't. Doesn't make any. Does yeah. well because it's here. Yard line. Rear yard line. No, 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 no. Yard line. We don't get the definition of yard. A line parallel to a lot line. A distance right. therefrom yeah. equal to the depth of the required yard. That's exactly what it says. Okay. Yeah, I'm not really clear on that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the last, yep. the last four you, or five words. You've got a lot to right. define. Now, why are you defining the yard? I don't know. Okay. Oh. You're trying to talk about the same two out. things, aren't you? Yard line. You don't use <coughs> yard line anywhere here. Side yard line. Side yard line. Yeah. Rear yard line. A line parallel Front to a lot line. Mm -hmm. A distance there from equal to the depth of the required yard. Why don't you just have that for So the yard the is required line. to be this deep and that's where the line is. I think that's what it's saying. But it's yeah, we, we, call, we call it setback lines. I think that's what this is mean. This is referring to like a setback line. Same but same. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Maybe. What sounds simple? Use it. Yeah, I agree. Oh, jeez. Wow. But you already got side setbacks in here. Right. So maybe we don't need it. I don't think you need yard line because it's... Boy, I could just imagine how we get on that one. Yeah. <laughs> Trying yeah, to okay. explain it. There's a lot of discussion <laughs> okay. on that to throw that off. Okay. Yep. All right. Okay, there we go. Well, that is a lot of progress. Do you want to <laughs> That's four or five we years of progress. Right. I will right take now. all your That's comments. That's what we can uh, look at. And distill them. And, uh, and yeah, yeah, so hopefully you'll agree with what I come up with. So we got the looking amended in 19 August uh, <laughs> 1778. For the next meeting? For the next meeting. Great. Um, Good. And I want to put in a special plug. Uh, we're already talking about having the special town meeting in early October. Uh, 
Oh yeah, right here we got a good one. We have the special town meeting warrant articles they would like to have due August 1. Now, we get a lot of leeway. As long as we, we let the administrator know, David Nixon, on August 1, how many spaces we would like on the warrant, he typically gives us until sometime in later September, uh, early September, to uh, get them in. Okay. When is the town meeting, special town meeting? Uh, 19, 20, 21. It's the same week of our, uh, of our uh, year. A couple days later. Oh, our, when is our what? Thursday. Thursday the 18th? Yeah. That is late. That is later. The town meeting. Oh, special town meeting, okay. Right. Okay. okay, so um, the last, yeah. um, you, you were what they, yeah. talking about getting the um, recreational yeah. marijuana by law with election. a target of yeah. late August. Um, June 21. Yeah. Uh, oh, and Larry has oh, okay. already a town, model town together. Okay. Oh that um, we're meeting with the group on Monday to review. Okay. And so I think it should be before that. Okay, because we, we very much, we, we need time to digest it ourselves. Right. And right. Um, we gotta, oh, okay. So we're gonna need it uh, hopefully in July. At, okay, at, at, I at think least. that's doable. I'll double check with him, but I think okay. so. Um, and let you know. Because if it doesn't get to us until August, uh, you know, we're really bumping up against uh, just time to. Yeah. We want to make sure town, town council looks at it. Mm -hmm. and just for everybody, remember, June 20th, we have a joint meeting with the Board of Selectmen mm -hmm. at 7 o'clock. Wonderful. To talk about the. Uh, Sub the uh, affordable housing by that will expire. But we also should at least mention to the board of selectmen on that date, and maybe the member here can mention it to have them at least have to think about it. Is part of the mar the marijuana bylaw. Typically, we set a limit on how many marijuana retail licenses can be issued, and that's based on how many liquor licenses are available. Anything less than 20% is considered, um, you need a town meeting and a referendum vote. It's like, it's like not allowing them. So the number wants to be 21% or greater. And a selectman are the one that should let, that's, that's actually part of the zoning bylaw, David. So the planning board will put it into the zoning bylaw, but the selectman should be the ones letting us know what's that percentage, the 25%, 50%, I, I don't know, okay. Okay, anything else for me? Next time they come, I'll bring in a few extra copies. And, you know, I will most helpful, do that. You know, I, I want to earn my, my salary. <laughs> the, uh, I was thinking you would all bring your own, so now I know. <laughs> the um, next meeting, that you would be at would be July 3rd, and that's the day before the 4th of July. So we were talking of not having a meeting that day. That's good, because I won't be here. Yeah, well, that's good for us, <laughs> too. <laughs> so August, uh, so August, 7th. August 7th, I will be back. <laughs> and uh, we'd like to have, like Bill said, you know, the, the um, hopefully we can get the definitions. Yep. MS5, or MS6, I'm sorry, we need MS6. Oh, you mean the MS4? Um, M M MS, MS4, yes. Although yes. you had sent an email, which yeah. I think is forwarded to everyone. Right. right, that said that we probably shouldn't do anything right now with it. Because the, the state, state is, is still working on it. The state is reading, even though it's going to go in a So it's all ready to go, and I had gone through and cut and pasted what was given to you before, so it's real clear, and the new sections are highlighted. And so it's all ready, but when the state is ready, then is the better time because we may have to do some more yeah, things. We, we don't need, we're, we're, we, we're telling any, any of our reviewing engineers to review it according to the new MS4 guidelines. Okay. 
um, whether or not it's written in a bylaw or not, and they can they can okay. come after us. But go ahead. I mean, you'll tie us in court for years doing this, as opposed to making a few changes. And then four design. will be applicable. Yeah. <laughs> but then, so um, that's we're, 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 we're okay with that. Okay. But question for on the MS4. I know the original thing was to take it out of zoning, put it in general. Right. And what is your latest recommendation? Do we have one? That is the recommendation. That's how we have it laid out as its own section, stormwater. In the general bylaw? Yes. And how do we reference that so that developers know to go there to look for that? We'll, we will definitely will reference it in the zoning. There's a chart that tells, that goes along with that, that tells where it needs to be referenced from the zoning and from other regulations. Okay, okay that's fine. That's in fine. town. Okay, good. So, so for August, you need the you want the definitions again and the mar recreational marijuana. Yes, yeah, that yeah. would be wonderful to have that. Yeah, and I'll let you know if there's going to be a problem with any of that. And well, if you get them ahead of time, email them to Bill yes. and distribute. Yes. And when is that time town meeting set for October? October eighteenth. October eighteenth is a tentative date. We grew up in the north. Okay, great. Very good. Thank you very much. Well. See you in August. Nine thirty. Well, yeah. Well, time yeah. flies. We went over a lot today. Yeah. You guys earned your keep tonight. <laughs> Look at John's I falling asleep know. over there. Hey, John. <laughs> oh, there he is. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, general information: mm -hmm. The finance committee is meeting at six o'clock tomorrow night in the town hall to discuss. Various special town meeting, warrant processing, and a few other things. And the CPA is meeting on June 11th at the Gold Court Public Room um, to discuss CPA items. Golden Court? Not Gold Gold Court. Court. Golden Gold Court. Court yeah. Gold Court Public Room. 42 Golden Court. Gold. That's golden, ain't it? No, it says Gold Court Public Room. Yes. That's Golden Court. What it about is. the Silver Room? I don't know. I only read what's in front of me. Oh my when God. is that? That's on June 11th. June 11th. Larry's supposed to make his presentation as to policy for CPA. Okay, so the Finance Committee is meeting on June 6th and June 7th at 6 p.m. in the town hall. Discuss special town meeting transfers and stuff like that. Okay. All right. Yes. Message for the planning board. I talked to Dave Nixon, and he said he could have um, Nyhart secretary do our minutes for us. Okay. And you know whether you contact him, he said there's time for her. She would take the film and do the minutes because. I feel for how can we remember what we did six months ago and to accept the minutes. So we should stay current with them. And if 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 she can do that and it did, then it just come forward and, and okay. verify it. She would she would she help, if she could do it from the tape, that would be great. Yes. Right. Yes. So yes. that's all you have to do is call Nixon about it and send okay. it up. Okay. Talk to her. Very good. <clears throat> good. I can give her my notes the next day. Okay. Right. Maybe between your notes and the, and the things you can get out yeah. stuff, but... Well, their secretary takes the film, and, and that's how she puts oh, okay. the together. Okay. So she would do the same thing. Okay. <coughs> Anything else? Right. Next meeting... Oh, yes. Yes. Next yes. meeting is yes. the 19th. Two weeks yes. 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 No, Where? Stiff at night. Hopkins Academy. Yes, at Hopkins Academy, right. <coughs> John's all set for that one? The 19th <coughs> in Hopkins? Yeah, it's in okay. one. Very good. That is for the senior center and the library, um, site plan approval, the whole rest of them. Do you have anything else for us? Yeah. Okay. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting is history. Thank you and thank you, John. <laughs>